Hi, Aileen. So good to see you. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Uh, hi, everyone. We're really happy to be back with our second of many product shorts. This topic, really, really exciting for me. I think this is one of the good ones. So without further ado, let's let's get into this. Yeah, I'm super passionate about this. Dark mode is is something that I, I personally use and I also believe in very strongly. So I'm really excited to talk about this today. Uh, our top five dark mode tips. So let's just get straight at it. So, hey, I'm Aileen and with me is Vera. Good to see everybody again. So yeah, what are we talking about today? So today, as we said, we're gonna demystify dark mode not because it's mysterious, but because I think everybody needs help with this one. It's just hard to get right. And Aileen has a lot of real pro tips to go over today. Um, so I'm, I'm just emceeing and then Aileen's the expert. So we'll talk about logo borders, social icons, hard to get right. Off white, not pure white. Wait till you see this. We have some really good examples here. Transparent backgrounds. I think this one, everybody's noticed this in their email inbox. So we're saving that one for second last. And then this last one, roll with it. Stay tuned because you'll want to see this. So without further ado, let's get right into this, Aileen. Yeah, so the number one is logo borders. We all have them in our emails. Logos are ubiquitous, we all got them. So how do you make sure that it looks good in dark mode? Um, you can see these are actually two that we have in dispatch and they're kind of on the darker side. So if you didn't have something around them, they'd pretty much disappear into the background. And I think this is a really cool example of two different ways you can kind of go about this. Um, behind this image is actually this neat little border with the dispatch. And then with the lightning one is, is a bit of a glow around the text. So that helps it just pop out of the background and make sure it's still visible. There's a couple of different ways in this to do this. You can do like a nice soft glow, um, but really you can do anything. And the neat thing about it is it's gonna be hidden in the regular mode. And then in dark mode, it kind of like comes through. So it's a neat way to have like an extra little design. And we've seen some companies do really cool things with this, but yeah, definitely recommend put something behind your logo um, if it's transparent like this so that you can have it pop through nicely. I love this because it's another way to make sure that you have really strong branding in your emails with just a little tweak, right? For people who are using dark mode. So really good tip. Next one, uh, social icons. Um, this is actually a really similar thing. Um, you have to make sure that there's something around it. Um, if you're just doing kind of something really simplified uh, logo, you, you want to make sure you've got something to make it pop out of the black background that surrounds it. Um, but I wanted to talk about one little um, snag that some cool email geeks have found uh, in making emails is that any image is under a hundred pixels. So that's pretty small, but that's about the size of a social icon generally, um, can be inverted in Gmail on Android. So this is something to think about. Um, it's actually affecting the colors of the image. And this isn't, I haven't actually been able to reproduce this personally, but I have seen examples of it in the wild. Um, and it's a really specific device. So, whether or not you want to specifically design against it is totally up to you, but I think you should know that it can be around. And we've seen some smaller icons, if you think of things when they're inverted, can become really weird and strange. The big one here is testing. Test it, test it, test it, and be aware that your colors might be muted or inverted. And um, ideally, you're kind of adding that into your design beforehand and thinking about it when you're at the design phase. That's my, that's my big hot tip that I'll get. That's kind of spoilers for the end. Going back to something we mentioned in the last video too, like check your audience. You might have a lot of folks who are using Gmail and Android. For some of our customers, this isn't a really big, like, you know, segment of their customers, but for some of them, this is really non-trivial. And so it is worth taking a look. So that might help you decide whether you want to invest in getting it right or not. Yeah. And, and really the, the key I think is make sure it's readable. Like, being inverted in this way, like you can still see them, but there's sometimes where, you know, something might get inverted and, and all of a sudden it's disappearing into the background. And that that's where I really think you can get into trouble. So let's just keep cooking along. Um, this one is really odd. <laughs> this one is really, really, really strange. And um, it's hard to reproduce. It's kind of a smattering of different devices do this, but essentially there's this, the hex code for white is FFF, FFF, F, 
Is that six apps? Six apps. Um, and if you do that, some of the email clients are specifically looking for this hex code to um, turn it black and or do some other strange things. Um, so one way to avoid this problem is to not use that code specifically. Um, and what, what I recommend is actually using FE, whoops, I kind of clicked there, but use FE, FFF, FF. So what this does, and you actually can't really tell because it's pretty much the exact same color. Um, you Like, I can't tell, if you can tell, write me, because like, that's impressive. You've got some kind of extra cones in your eyes to see colors, because it's, this has actually got a background here of FEF, FFF, and it's it's totally imperceptible, but um, email clients will um, not jump on you for it. So I have a really neat example actually ready to go if we want to take a look at this, where I've I've built something um, that uses it, and you can see it how it's changing. Here you go. So here's um, this is a button with white text and off white, and down here is um, the kind of the button, but the background is white or off white. So you can see I've kind of I've kind of written it's a little bit tiny, um, but if I flip through, you can get a feeling for like how much this changes. So look here, this um, is a cool one. Um, this is Apple Mail, which is usually really good. It's targeting the white and turning it black, but it's not targeting this one um, because it's off white. So now your button is still going to be visible. Um, and that's really important. Uh, really, you want things to continue to be visible, obviously you do want things to like be inverted. You're not trying to blind anyone who's using dark mode, but um, this will allow them to invert them or mute them in ways that make sense without making something totally invisible. You can imagine if I had um, black text instead of purple on top of this button, now the button would just be a little black square <laughs> because the I difference didn't. between legibility and illegibility. Also exactly. shout out to Litmus for powering this preview for us. <laughs> yeah, thanks Litmus. Um, so yeah, and this, this example down here is a background image where the background color was set to pure white and off-white. The off-white, the background image is um, there still. And then with pure white, um, the background image was totally stripped. <laughs> so not only was the background image stripped, but then the background was changed from white to black. So now it's become totally legible. So this one, I know a lot of email geeks out there who don't ever use pure white and don't ever use pure black for the same reason. So it's a quick change to your code to just search for all your F, 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 Fs <laughs> and change them to F, E, F. Um, so just a little bit of a tweak. It's not noticeable to the eye, but it is noticeable to the email clients. Such a good tip. So um, I'm just going to keep burning along. This one is a really fun one, I think. Um, it's not something that you need to do. Um, you need to be aware that this can happen. But um, when you use a transparent image, um, the background color can change and be have a total different experience. And I think this is a really neat one. It's this, similar to the, the way we talked about the logos where you kind of have this extra thing that pops through in dark mode. Um, but it can also be a way I think to make your, your branding more consistent. So if you have something that's like just an image um, and you want it, how do you want it to stand out when in dark mode? Do you want it to be kind of the same vibe as it is in light mode where it's sort of a floating image or do you want it to have a background do you want it to have a glow um make sure it's not entirely black <laughs> this is actually there's a little llama here uh in the middle because this one is just all a png so definitely test it out to make sure that it, the parts of it are visible but how do you want it to be visible and i have another cool example here where i have an image of our dear mosey um, Moses, Piero's dog, and one has a nice background included, um, and then one is transparent, and then one has a white background. Um, so it's kind of a fun way to look at, like, this is a great way to just test quickly with your images, is um, just make the background color uh, black really quickly. And you can see that I've got, like, here's my little image. It kind of has the similar vibe to light mode, except now it's dark mode. I've got a cool like little floating mosey head. Um, but the one that I didn't notice, maybe I didn't even know that there's a bat white background, a little white border around there. And it's kind of harsh and doesn't have the same vibe. Um, but this perfect little mosey in the flowers is 
is perfect either way. So it's up to you, it's up to your designs, but make sure you're thinking about how your transparent PNGs will be um, inverted and how um, you want them to look, um, whether or not you want it to be something without a background or, or with a background. That's the, the secret here is that Moses is cute no matter what, right? And I'm <laughs> obviously biased, but make sure that you're deliberate about how you want the image to look because there's a use case for all three of these contexts and just make sure that you decided ahead of time instead of just waiting to see what happened. So thanks yeah. Moses for the cameo. Yeah, thank you Moses. So the, the final one I'll say is that uh, this is roll with it. I really think that um, dark mode isn't going anywhere. If you plan for it, it's not nearly as painful and embrace it because there's a lot of really neat things you can do to your branding to like delight dark mode users who are used to like looking at like for me, I, I'm always in dark mode. So I'm seeing strange broken emails I'm seeing um, or even just ones that just clearly didn't think about me and my needs and how how much I'm looking at my phone in a dark room and being blinded by their emails. Um, if you can, if you can do it, you can really delight a lot of your audience is it's growing. Dark mode users are growing all the time and it's not going anywhere. For sure. Uh, you don't want things to look like a blooper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't also want to offend the people who, you know, there's real accessible accessibility reasons for using dark mode. And these people, we should care about them and we should, we should make cool emails for them too. Everyone deserves beautiful emails. Um, and the way you do that is, is fold it into your designs early and test it, test it, test it, test it, um, think about it and test it. And then accept that your designs will change. Your, your colors may be muted, they may be inverted, but they should still be legible. With that, we're coming up to key takeaways. So the pro tip, test out dark mode in the design phase. Test it out once you've built the email using Litmus. We say this all the time, testing, but uh, we don't like a single broken email going out. And uh, I mean, that's why we built Dispatch, obviously, but the, the key to that is just testing along the way. Um, a little note here that don't forget that if you need help, you can always contact us. We have a lot of email geeks at Dispatch. It's not just Aileen, it's not just the folks doing these videos. In Dispatch, we actually have a little bubble where you can just ask for help at any time and somebody will apply to you in real time, uh, which is rare. And I wish more folks took us up on that. And um, the must do here is watch out for Gmail and Android. No bloopers, we warned you. So now you know what to do next. Yeah. So sure. with that, I'll say um, on the next slide, we have some resources of how to get a hold of us. It's the same as last time. Um, also, you just find us on dispatch.io. And finally, our last slide has another feature from my dog Moses. And I just wanna say thank you. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, email us, reach out, uh, reply to this video wherever you're watching it. And with that, Aileen and I bid you until next time. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Aileen. Bye.